do it. There we go. Hey, guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to The Ted Show. Happy Monday. We are live on Monday, October 16th. I'm super excited to have these two returning guests and friends back on The Ted Show. We have Teresa Smith, Levin, and David Bracamonte. Uh, they're here to talk about Dracula, the musical. I tried to do my own little Dracula voice. Did not work at all. One iota. Um, Teresa Smith Levin, of course, you know her from Central Florida Vocal Arts, Opera del Sol. She is super involved in our community and brings so much light to the arts and our community here. And David is a talented vocalist, actor. Um, I don't know. He's a star in my mind. You both are. Uh, perfect timing for this musical, and we're going to hear a little ditty from David, too. So welcome to both of you. How are you today? Doing well, thanks, Ted. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Sorry, I'm happy. very dramatic. I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to match my thought process on <laughs> Acula, and I don't know. I don't know. It's, maybe it's the champagne, um, allegedly. All right, so we'll start with introductions. Teresa, tell them, for those people who don't know you, who you are and what you do. I'm Teresa. I feel like everybody knows me because I've been on this show, I don't know, maybe like 10 times. I love you. Um, <laughs> if you're not sick of me yet, I am the founder and executive director of Central Florida Vocal Arts. And uh, that also includes our sister company, Opera del Sol. And we are getting ready to open Dracula the Musical this coming Friday, October 20th. Um, we are a company that works to use our platform and performing arts to build a better community. And what we mean by that is that we believe that everybody in our community should have equitable access to meaningful arts experiences. A lot of times uh, those have been exclusive, hasn't been an opportunity for every everybody in our community to engage in the conversation, whether they're barred from access by financial means or just their background, they don't feel like they understand or are a part of the art scene. We want to welcome all of those people to the table. And we think by having a more inclusive, diverse arts culture, we can build a better, more connected, confident community in Central Florida. I love it. God, that, that was one of the best elevator speeches. And I know it wasn't, but good Lord, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I write a lot of grants, Ted. <laughs> I use a lot of words. All right. Well, I'm happy you're back. So tell us, tell us about David, or make an inter introduction oh to gosh. David, and then David will have so you. We were talking share. about David before we got here. We were talking about you, and I think this is the fifth show that David has done with us. And going back to very humble beginnings, so I have a deep appreciation for David and Kit, who have been with us from like the very beginning, um, but he's just a rock star, an incredible performer, but also just a, a really um, wise performer to work with. He is uh, one of the directors of entertainment at Gaylord Palms, and so he understands both sides of the performance, both as the actor, but also as producer director. And so that gives him an insight that makes him really fun and easy to work with as the director. And um, just really a wonderful friend and a kind human and somebody that I'm really grateful to have a part of this production. I love it. Well, you, from the very beginning, you have gotten so good at these, Teresa. Wow. Um, all right, David, welcome back, my friend. How are you? And then tell us about you. Thanks, I'm doing well. Thanks for having us on. Uh, I am, like Teresa said, actor, singer, producer, director, casting director. I wear a lot of hats in the community, um, but I'm super excited to be back with Central Florida Vocal Arts and Opera del Sol with Dracula. Uh, it's a you know a, a show that's rarely produced, so it's exciting to bring this to Central Florida and um, to really share this uh, this music and this story. So let, we all know the basic story of Dracula, mm -hmm. Teresa. So why Dracula the musical? Okay, I get it. It's October. So don't all my October crazy Halloween people give me a hard time. I love the thought process, but Dracula and a musical. I'm fascinated mm -hmm. by it. So give us a little bit of history on that and your why. Okay, so I was talking to somebody who's not like a music person the other day about this. And they had reminded me that there's a scene in the movie Saving Sarah Marshall where they're in a bar um, doing karaoke and like making fun of the idea of Dracula being a musical, which I had forgotten existed. Um, but I think that's really a great point of reference to say like, yeah, that is sort of interesting to think about Dracula being a musical, right? But when we look at a lot of different themes that are used as musicals, a lot of different literary um, sort of archetypes, and I, my whole life, have been a vampire nerd. I can remember being like maybe six. And I think about this a lot because I have a six-year-old now. 
But I remember being in my dad's like tan Ford Explorer and him listening to the Bram Stoker Dracula like on tapes. And so one of the scenes where um, uh, David as Dracula is yelling at the guys like you creeping jackals. I can remember listening to that as a very small child. And so I've sort of been a vampire nerd my whole life. And um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was my favorite show as like a preteen. I have watched it as an adult over and over again. Um, Vampire Diaries, True Blood is one of my favorite shows. And then I, I really just like the way we see Dracula sort of combine this this glamour with this horror and also this like uh, darkness with like also like this like love and seduction. I love all of that. And I think I'm not alone in that. I also think when we talk about like the mission of these companies, um, Dracula is something that's an approachable theme that somebody might not maybe go to the theater a lot, but be like, oh my gosh, I love vampires. I love Dracula. That might welcome somebody to us that otherwise might not have decided to go see a show. And so I think it really fits in both with our mission, but also with what we love. I had not intended to direct the show originally. Um, and we had closed the secret garden in May. And this is sort of my brain is like a computer. It only has so much RAM it can hold at a time. And so we'd, we'd gotten that closed and I'd gone to sleep and should have been like dead to the world. And I woke up at three or four with this vision of how I wanted to do the show. And I realized like, okay, I need to go ahead and direct this. And I'd really wanted to do it in an abandoned church with the idea of like, just again, this really immersive um, telling of the space using a choir loft. Uh, but believe it or not, and as a person in real estate, you probably know this, uh, using abandoned churches, not a lot exists. And also there's a huge liability with that. So <laughs> the next best option was City Arts. They opened their Dia de los Muertos um, gallery on Thursday night. So it's all sort of the occult, dark Halloween themed art. And so the whole gallery will be covered in the theme. And so we use that to our benefit. Um, the other thing with this is, you know, it's not a theatrical space. And so I thought, how do I tell this story in a way that doesn't feel silly because we don't have all these tech elements, right? And so we're playing into a whole different theme that I think is really relevant, at least for me, is, um, you know, told through this trauma that Mina goes through. Because there are things that we know for a fact happened to Mina. You know, she starts to hear voices, right? Her best friend dies. And then she's having this relationship with two different men. And then another one of them dies. So that's a lot in a short period of time. And also, where are the girl's parents? Who knows? They never show up in the story, but I felt like she needed a hug. Um, and so all that to say, there's a question of, is this? did this really happen? Or was it just so much and so traumatic on Mina that this is sort of her break with reality and how her brain has reframed all of this trauma? So asking ourselves, like, is my experience real? Like, am, am I losing it? Am I crazy? Like, how much can someone take before they just have to check out? And so um, I think that's a whole separate set of fears. And we let that play into this immersiveness when guests arrive, that they're checking into the sanitarium, that you see Mina and Renfield. And, and so that helps sort of bring them into the space of her mind and her experience. Love it. And I love... I love the venue and I want to get back to that in a second, but I want to ask David, why, what was attractive about Dracula for you as an actor, director, producer, all those good things? Uh, what was attractive about this particular production for you? Well, I think what was so interesting to me and what made the this particular production such a draw was that the show on Broadway was done with so many bells and whistles and that was the focus of the show. The focus of the storytelling was not telling the story. The focus of the storytelling was David Copperfield consulted on all the magic effects. So it felt like a string of magic effect to magic effect to magic effect. And I love Dracula. I think it's it's one of the great novels um, ever. And I think the story that's in the, the text stands on its own. And I think this, um, this take on it where we really get to um, explore those gritty bits and explore the humanity of these characters is a more interesting um, concept. And I'm really excited that we get to share it with Central Florida. I'm excited. I, and I want to talk about the immersive part, Teresa, which you've mentioned. And we talked a little bit about before we went live. Um, you're not just, I mean, this is immersive. So uh, g give us the 411 on that and explain to them why that's different and where we're at. Where is it? City Arts, a lot of people don't even know, even though they might have heard of it. 
Yes. So it was uh, right before we got started, I was working on a no before you go email that will go out to patrons because I want them to understand like this is truly immersive. So one part of it is what, what do we mean when we say immersive? So when um, our guests arrive, they're going to check in downstairs and they're going to check in like as a patient at the sanitarium. So we're going to let them know, like, these are the things to expect. Here's the bar over here if you want to calm your nerves. And they're going to be downstairs. And, and while they're downstairs, there's actually a video reel playing of, of Mina's experiences and Mina's life. And then when they go upstairs, when we welcome them to the actual performance space, we'll already have some of our patients, some of our staff um, who are in the space. And the action, the whole show takes a place in every part of the room. So you come into the gallery and you'll see we're theater in the round, right? So we have a center platform and that's used quite a bit. But then we also have scenes that take place on this side of the gallery, the other side of the gallery. We have the band in the corner, we have the tech in the back. And so every, because it's, it's just a big room, every part of the space has to be used. And what that also means is you become sort of intertwined into the action. So there's a lot of scenes where you will have maybe Mina, for instance, in the center of the room singing, and then Dracula behind. So you're sort of washed in the sound of these two performers singing at one another, and you're in between them. And so that's a very different experience when you're sort of in the energy. We're not singing at you. You're literally like absorbing this energy that these actors, these performers are putting out vocally, but emotionally. And so really having a unique, special experience in that way. It's beautiful. I'm very excited about that. I think we've all kind of experienced um, uh, murder, mystery, sleuthy kind of stuff where you're sort of kind of in it until it really gets started. Uh, but this, I love the fact that people will be in the middle when they're singing at or to each other. Uh, if you haven't been to City Arts, it's such a beautiful venue. Uh, the space is just a, a blank canvas for beautiful ideas like this. And so City Arts is just, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. All right, so before um, we have David sing a little bit for us, Teresa, tell us about the details. How can people get tickets? When does the show kick off and how long does it go for and all of that good stuff? Sure. So it is in the gallery. And as we talked about immersive, it's also really intimate. There are 74 seats every night. And so that means this is going to sell out. There's, I think, maybe 15 tickets left for opening night right now. And so we open on Friday, October 20th. We also have a show on Sunday, the 22nd. The 21st is Pride downtown. So we want everybody to be able to celebrate, but also there's going to be a lot of commotion, a lot of traffic. So we do not have a Saturday night show. So Friday, Sunday, and then the following week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the 26th through the 29th, you can find tickets at centralfloridavocalarts.org or operadelsol.org. They're accessible there. We also will be at the Wren Theater tonight doing uh, Musical Mondays if you want a preview of this freaking talented cast. It's stupid. Um, and just have a great evening. That'll be tonight. Uh, doors open at 7.30. The uh, show starts at 8 o'clock at the Wren Theater. So you can come check out and see what we're talking about when we're talking about these powerful voices, this amazing storytelling. All right. Speaking of powerful voices, David, I'm going to put you front and center. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about what you're going to sing and then sing a few uh, bars for us, putting you on the spot on a Monday morning. Um, hopefully, you, hopefully you've worked out those vocal cords. Uh, but, uh, tell us a little bit, and then well, I'll take Teresa and I off, and then uh, you can just go into a little bit of song for us. Yeah. Um, so the music from the show is by Frank Wildhorn. Um, you may have known his, you know, more popular works like Jekyll and Hyde. Um, so the music is very lush and gothic and beautiful and dramatic. Um, it's also very technically challenging, which has been really great to work with our music director, Bert Rodriguez, who is just one of the top talents in this town, um, as well as the rest of this cast. But so the song that I'm going to share this morning a little bit of is um, it's at the very end of, of the story. And Dracula is sort of contemplating his life, his choices and um, what he wants from from the world. Um, it's a very poignant moment. It's one of the only moments where you see one character by themselves on the stage. And um, 
Yeah. So uh, I'll let the song speak for itself. I'm just gonna sing a little bit of it for you this morning. Yeah. I've seen so many sunsets in my life. I should know everything there is worth knowing. But since I saw your face, I don't know where I am. There's no map that can show me where I'm going. The longer I live, the less I wonder. If I knew anything at all, if I've ever been in love, I can't recall. So that's just a little snippet of uh, one of those final songs. So beautiful. I love the setup on that. And I think I think this storyline itself, uh, there's always been that interesting sadness to it or longing or a uh, deep desire for real connection in that Dracula story as a whole. Um, I'm excited. Thank you for doing that on a Monday morning, by the way. Absolutely beautiful. All right. One last time, Teresa, tell them again, where can they get tickets? CentralFloridaVocalArts.org. That's O-R-G. Or Opera, O-P-E-R-A. Del D E L Sol S O L dot O R G. You can find tickets there, and again, we will sell out. So I would not wait. It's the scariest thing is to get shut out. So we only have seventy four seats every night. So make sure you get those tickets sooner than later. All right, David Bracamonte, Teresa Smith Levin, thank you so much. Instead of breaking a leg, I thought maybe you should break a fang. Uh, good <laughs> luck. Um, have an amazing opening night, and I will see you sometime next week. Y'all get involved. This is what. Uh, our city is so great about, and uh, Central Florida Vocal Arts, Opera del Sol, City Arts. There are so many amazing presentations, uh, so many amazing shows, and so much amazing arts-centric things that go on in our city. So take advantage of them. Much love to both of you. I'm super excited. We'll see you guys soon. Bye, everybody. Love you, too. Thank you.